it will tap. So I'm giving this 4 out of 5. Yeah, it could have easily gotten a 5 out of 5 if it was not made for Netflix, if it was not on Netflix, because they use a lot of tropes. This, oh, this is Tomb Raider, the legend or the story of Lara Croft. It's animated, it just came out. I did the 8 episodes. Each episode is like 30 minutes or 20 something minutes. Pretty awesome, but I, I'm just going to start with the negatives because, you know, I, Netflix, I'm slowly just getting tired of Netflix. You know, they, you know they have an agenda. Clearly they have an agenda because they, are, they keep pandering to the same, <laughs> they keep, they pander a lot to women and I'm like, it's okay, it's fine. Just do something good with it. You know, I love Kill Bill, personally. Kill Bill panders a lot to women, but they do it in such a stylistic and a believable way. It's fun. It's enjoyable. You don't, you don't even think about that when you're going to Kill Bill. It doesn't really hit you because of the, the, the way the characters are, are placed in a scene, the way characters are, are framed, the way characters are put into a story. This show, it doesn't pander a lot to women. It's very subtle. It's subliminal. It's in the background. You, you actually have to be an animator or a filmmaker to actually see it because there are frames that I was looking at and I was like, that doesn't look right. You are literally trying to tell us that you have a Middle Eastern women, you have Asian women, you have black women. You are literally trying to tell us in this scene that you have a diverse group of women and there are two dudes. And then the dudes are always the bad guys. Yeah, the dudes are always the ones who are making stupid mistakes. The dudes are always the ones who are trying to drag everything down. That's the Netflix formula. That's how usually it goes. Now, the biggest mistake that they did with this is that they defeminized women. By that I mean that this is Lara Croft. I mean, you don't even see a cleavage until episode 8, where you just see a line. You, you know, Lara Croft, you know Lara Croft. You know how she looks like. So there is an absence of that. Even with the side characters, there is um, Lara Croft's best friend, Paris. Like flat, like totally flat and totally flat and everything is covered. Everything and she wears pants and she's like, a lot of crap the same way. You begin, you begin episode one, you get her wearing the normal or whatever, but the cleavage is covered and you don't get a lot of shots with her full body. You don't see her femininity at least until you really get into episode one. And there's a scene they do with the dress. I was like, yes, that's what you need to do with this character. Not necessarily put her in a dress, but just, just throw, just throw to us her, her feminine side because she's a beautiful woman. And you actually get to see her with the dress she does whatever she does you also get a bit of that in episode eight and you also get a bit of that in episode seven where she has like a yellow uh, diving suit and it just pops out her figure like she you, you can see that she's actually a, she has a really good shape toned really good shape and she looks very very beautiful in that despite the fact that it's underwater for most part but she looks great i thought she looked really she looked like a woman but Every other female character in this show is dressed down. There's nothing. There's nothing. It's, it's, it's like the producers of this show went like, we don't want to see any feminine form in this show. Yes, we know that most people who are going to watch this play the game, but we are going to strip away the femininity out of all these female characters in this particular show. And they also do that assembly of Oh look, there are some scenes you'll see, you'll see a particular body size, a particular body size, a particular age, and you'll see that scene and you'll go like, ah, F you Netflix, and you can see what you're doing. Come on, you can see, oh, but you have an agenda and it's okay. You're trying to create that idea of, look, we are inclusive, we have a diverse cast. So, that's my complaint about this particular show. The Netflix DEI checklist is very strong with this show. When you go to the positives, Oh my gosh, this is an awesome show. Yeah, I know. Please. I know IGN has given it like a 5 and IMDB has given it like a 6. But my goodness, this is a fun show. This is like Indiana Jones plus a bit of James Bond uh, plus a bit of Marvel Infinity War. Just a droplet of that because there is an element of stones that, you know, so when you bring together something happens, there's an element of that. Then there's an element of, uh, as I say, Bond, uh, the adventure of 
Indiana Jones is very, very strong. It is when it comes to embracing the Lara Croft that the stories that you are familiar with. If you, basically, if you've played any Lara Croft game, if you've read the graphic novels, if you've interacted with any Lara Croft IP, any production, anything, you're going to love this because you have the puzzles, you have the adventure, you have the mystery, then you have that bond-like thing whereby they, she has, was this episode, which episode was that? Was it episode five? Where she has to go to Istanbul and, and you know, do some, uh, I loved it, man. Yeah, so it's great. If you love, if you love Tomb Raider, you're going to have a great time with this. You're going to have a great time with the character because unlike the video game and some of the movies, we get a sense of our emotional state actually based on what happened to her uncle and what happened to her dad. So that emotional moment kind of humanizes her. It kind of grounds her. It kind of makes, it made me connect with her because she felt like a normal person. She felt like she was going through some challenges, and there are some there are some very good sequences with uh, what do I what, what, how do I put it illusions. There, there's an element of Templars. If you played Assassin's Creed, when I mentioned Templars, you understand what I'm talking about. So there's an element of that. There's an element of the Templars, and they they kind of they kind of explore that in a very interesting way. I appreciated with where they took a particular sequence with some things if you see it you'll know it that was pretty awesome i would say that now why i love this show so much and i want to recommend it to anybody if you're watching this you should go and catch the show yes i know the dei is very strong i know the list the the, the netflix list is very strong but my goodness the animation the action the way the action is animated and then the backgrounds this is a beautiful show it's beautiful it's way more beautiful than the Twilights of the Gods. And you know how much I loved the art of the Twilights of the Gods. This is far more beautiful. There is far more vegetation. There are these other places that they go to. There's the desert which looks fantastic. There's something they do with a mushroom. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, yeah, this this is it. There's episode 8 where Lara and jo Jonah go to this place. And you're like, oh my goodness. I was like, this is beautiful this is beautiful i mean the way they use the way they lead the environments and the environments themselves because they are very rich in terms of mystery in terms of uh, the art the hmm, how do i put it i don't want to use the word concept i want to use artifacts the way they used artifacts and puzzles for especially episode eight i was like the way they visually represented them i was like that is awesome it looks good. Actually, for most part, I was just looking at some scenes and going like, this is beautiful. When you are introduced to Paris, my goodness, I was like, this is a picture. But apparently it's a drawing. I paused and actually looked at it to confirm whether it was actually a drawing. Because it looks like a picture. That's, the sense of realism with the environment is amazing. So, and, and the animation. Animation is fluid. It doesn't feel like anime. The animation is far more fluid. This is from Legendary Studio, so I'm not kind of surprised. But generally, the animation is awesome. The movements are awesome. They experiment with some or with some really good-looking angles. There's one they do with a car. Then there's one they do in episode eight when Lara Croft is fighting something else and the camera is just following her. That was pretty awesome. And then there are these underground places that they go to, and there's just lava and everything is just lit. Oh my, my, this is a very, very, this is a very good looking show. And to add to that, they actually had a story because it follows, as I said, Avengers, when you think Avengers and you think of the stones, it's kind, it's kind of the same formula, but it's far more distant in that it's not five stones, it's just like three stones. And then there's a mystery around that. And, and, and so you get to go to different areas. And so it feels like a complete story. And then Jonah's arc now ties everything up into one it's, it's the kind of show have you ever watched a show and went like i like how this looks but i'm kind of bored and then it just goes on and then you go like i didn't feel really anything because it doesn't feel very well connected this one is very well connected i mean from one from one episode to the other it just follows up and then they did something very interesting with the title card with the name tom tomb raider whatever based on the events of the ah, beautiful that title card it's really really you're going to see, you're going to see it in episode one, you're going to think, ah, did I make a mistake somewhere? Then as you go on, it's going to become now 
the thing that ties everything in together. So that is commendable. I really, really love this show. Please, please. Yes, I know we have a problem with Netflix, DAI, and we need people to start calling them out for this thing. It's, it's literally tokenization. You know, they use the concept of DEI to pretend that they are better than everyone else. Like they represent representation. But for them, their scenes, especially, oh no, I don't want to go into that. I will just urge you to ignore some of the reviews that you're seeing as an entertainment show. It's very, very entertaining. It's engaging. The action is good. It's paced very well. And the, there is nothing, apart from the DEI from Netflix, there is nothing really wrong with it as a Lara Craft story. The adventure is there. The action is there. The absurdity of where they take the story, because they, at some point, fully embrace the supernatural element of Lara Craft. And, and that's one of the best parts about episode 8. And uh, was it episode episode five? Yeah, I think episode five. Yeah, the, the, there are moments that they embrace some things about this particular universe that you just leave a smile on your face. Give it a try. Give it a look. Just give it a chance. It's very, very engaging. It's very entertaining. It's very well paced, and it will give you and it will keep you engaged. Each episode is like twenty something minutes, almost close to thirty minutes. If you love animation, if you love art, this is a must. Yeah, this is a must. This is a very, very it, if you love animation, this is this is a must. It's very well illustrated. The, the, the backgrounds are beautiful. It's just almost perfect. Yeah, apart from making the black dude gay uh, and the annoying voice, making him the annoying voice in the computer and just destroying the character. Because how do you take a black character, make him look like a pimp, sound like a pimp, but he's gay from America in Britain? I thought that was a very dumb move. I, honestly, Netflix, I don't know what the fuck you guys are thinking about, but not cool, not cool at all. I know you try to pretend that you're the you know, pinnacle of diversity and stuff, but there's just something off with how you do it. That was so unnatural. You know, it, it was so annoying. And then it's used in such a way that they can cut it out. Yeah, it's used in such a way that, for example, I, I'm sure you can watch this in a particular country and that idea of that character being a certain way can be removed because it's, you see that in a single scene and then it's mentioned in another single scene somewhere in the beginning. You see that at the end of the beginning, just mentioned and then one scene just shown, but something that is less than two seconds, le le less than three seconds long. So it's something that has been cut out. That's why I think that it's just, it's, it's just pretense, you know. But it's the Netflix DEI, and we need more people to start calling them out. You know, why are you def defeminizing women? You know, why are you defeminizing the female form? And that is the one thing that actually remained with me. Yeah, I know that I'm a black dude, and I would want to see black dude properly represented. I mean, you have a tech guy. Why is a tech guy speaking like a pimp? He's supposed to be smart. You know, he's supposed to be one of the most intelligent people in the team. Why does he speak that way? And number two, why are you defeminizing the human, the female form? The sexiness element of Lara Croft is not, does not exist. Even the idea of sexiness in this show does not fucking exist with the women. I appreciate a bit of, you know, I appreciate beautiful looking forms. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with the idea of a character being sexy? You know, what, there's a goddess. And I'm like, this was a great opportunity to, to create a visually appealing goddess. But you have all these other noises with the goddess. And, and you're like, why did you have all this shit around her, man? Why couldn't you just, you know, why are you not celebrating her form? Camilla from Castlevania is one of my favorite villains. I always talk about her because she is feminine, she's beautiful, she's sexy. But she's also very dangerous. And that's why I love her as a female character and as a villain. You know, she feels like a woman who is who understands that she's a woman. She has long hair, she has a slick body, she has a slick dress, and she has she should she show off her legs every scene that she gets an opportunity to do it. And that makes her very beautiful. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm just complaining about that because Netflix is slowly becoming extremely annoying with this. Because when you look at this, 
If you watch this show, you'll understand where I'm coming from because they genuinely have a very good show. They genuinely have a very, very, very entertaining show. But they've added all these other elements that affect our modern entertainment culture that it slowly becomes, every episode becomes a struggle. I mean, they have a scene whereby a character says, uh, real men cry something, tears of something. And I'm like, was that line necessary? Honestly speaking, was that line necessary for that particular scene? Especially with what they had established with the character of Jonah. I mean, this is perfect, but it's only destroyed by Netflix's checklist and DEI. So basically, that's it. Remember to always watch what you enjoy and enjoy what you watch. Um, see you on the next one. And if, you've ever, if you have a YouTube channel and you watch this Netflix show, we just need to start calling them out. Because this is from Crystal Dynamics and Legendary Pictures. Of course, they had notes from Netflix because they expect those notes to have things that Netflix expect in their production. But you don't need that trash, especially if you have a good production. You, you, we know that you have your own agenda, but we don't need that in our production. It's very frustrating. You know, it's that one thing that you feel like, oh, I'm looking at this beautiful thing, but then something is said or something is shown that totally throws you off. I just want to be entertained. I don't need, oh, anyway, have a great day. Goodbye.